What's up guys, back again with another uh, UFC Fight Picks video and we're going to be talking about the UFC Fight Night card Lewis versus Hunt and this is going to be on the uh, FS1 prelims so let's go ahead and get started here guys uh, first fight on TV we got uh, Kichi Kunimoto versus Zach Otto let's go ahead, let's go ahead and uh, open up their pages real quick give you guys some quick info got this loading up All right. All right. So here's Kunimoto's page. Uh, 36 years old. So obviously, if not past his prime, he's gaining past his prime. Uh, 18 and six record though, not bad. Uh, grappling and well-rounded is his skill set or summary. Uh, he was on a three-fight win streak. That was in 2014 though. That was a while back already, right? Uh, and his last fight was against Neil Magny, which was in 2015. We're, we are now in 2017, so it's been over two years, so pretty long fucking layoff. I don't know if this guy got injured or something or, you know, what was up with him or whatever. But, yeah, this guy's been out for a while. Uh, anyways, he, he did lose to Neil Magny, who, obviously, if you guys remember, Magny was, like, on a big win streak also. I think Magny was at, at one point on a seven, seven fight win streak or eight fight win streak, something like that. So, yeah, obviously... Magni was able to, to put him away. Uh, I mean, he pretty much got outclassed in that fight. You can see he only landed like 10 significant strikes and only one takedown. Um, before that, he beat some pretty much some lesser competition. Let's go ahead and check out his opponent, Zach Otto. Obviously, this guy's more of a, more in his prime, 30 years old, 14-4 record, striking, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. Uh, as you can see right here. Last fight was against Sergio Moraes, where he lost a split decision, but he actually had more significant strikes, but Moraes had a takedown on him. Against Josh Berkman, where he came in as a, I think, a short notice replacement. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't, I don't think he was a, I don't think he was a huge underdog, but I'm pretty sure he was the underdog in the fight. Uh, pretty much just stood up with Berkman most of the time, landed more effective, sh more effective shots on the feet. Um... Brown belt and BJJ, orange belt and Taekwondo, seven first round finishes, three wins by KO, nine by submission. He has two guillotines, three rear naked chokes, three arm triangles, and an undiscl undisclosed uh, choke. So obviously this guy, you know, does have some good submission skills, same as his opponent. So both these guys are good grapplers, but it's going to be all about who's better on the feet. And I think that's uh, Zach Otto, guys. I think he's going to be able to land more output, as we can see uh, Kunimoto's output. It's, it's pretty low, but I mean, those first two fights, I mean, they ended in the first round. But I mean, in a split decision, a split decision win right here against Rich Walsh, he had 36 significant strikes. And then against Magny, 10 significant strikes. So yeah, this guy's very low output. I just think Otto should be able to outpoint him. I think Otto's almost, I want to say, the safest pick on the whole card. Um, I think on DraftKings, actually him and there's some other guy up here. This Alexander guy are the, the most expensive guys on DraftKings right now. But anyways, I'll get to the that other part of the card uh, on a separate video. Um, but yeah, Otto is one of the safest picks on the card, I think, guys. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's negative 340. That, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, Volkanovski is negative 650. Um, yeah, so he's the second, second most, yep. Like I was like like I was thinking there. So yeah, Zach Auto, pretty safe pick. Should be able to just outpoint, just outclass his opponent here. Um, and yeah, just win the fight. You know, I think he just keeps it on the feet. Stuffs uh, Kunimoto's takedown, just fucks him up on the feet, and more than likely uh, wins by decision. So yeah, Auto by decision. Next fight we got John Moraga versus Askin uh, Mokhtarian. Open up their pages real quick. Moraga. A lot of people already know Moraga. This guy's obviously a flyweight. Um, fought DJ for the title one time. Hasn't looked too good lately. He's on a three-fight losing streak. Um, he lost to Sergio Perez, who's obviously a good fighter. Um, then he lost to some guy that I don't even know, Matthews Nicolo. So that that guy is kind of an unknown, and he ha he even lost to him. So that's kind of surprising there. Then he also lost to Benavidez, who obviously is a, a really good fighter. Um, his last win was in 2014 against Willie Gates. That was a while back. Um, anyways, next fight here, or next fighter, uh, Askan Mokhtarian. This guy's making his UFC debut. He's two years younger, 
13 and 1 record. His summary is power and looks. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, we're talking about fighting skill set here, but fuck it. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, this guy's on a six fight win streak, six wins by knockout, six by submission. He has a heel hook, three rear naked chokes, and two guillotines. Obviously, the rear naked chokes seems to be one of his favorite submissions, along with the guillotine there. Uh, seven first round finishes. This guy's obviously a finisher, and to me, in the when I was watching the weigh ins, he, he looked like a big flyweight to me. So, you know, he's a big, big flyweight, but so is Moraga. Both these guys are kind of big. Um, BJ Purple Belt. Anyways, let's go ahead and go back over here. So we know he has some submission skills. Moraga doesn't really utilize his wrestling too much, and I think that would be the game plan here to try to wrestle Askin down. Because um, I, I don't know too much about Askin's ground game. From what I've seen, he, he's just kind of like a striker. Um, has good power. Um, what else? I mean, I think that's kind of about it. Um, I mean, I just know he's pretty much a good striker. Does have some submission wins though, as you guys could see there. I mean, he obviously has some submission ability. So, you know, couple that with uh, some good power. You know, a submission game with good power. I think that could be enough to beat Moraga here. Um, Moraga hasn't looked too good lately. I mean, he, yeah, he just hasn't really looked good at all, guys. Uh, um, I think Askin could hurt him on the feet. Um, I think he's the bigger puncher here. Um... Yeah, so, uh, you know, Moraga is the favorite. I mean, obviously, he's fought a better competition and whatnot. But I, I, I like asking Mc McTarian here, man. I think he has good power. And for DraftKings, I I'm for sure going to put him on a lineup. He's very cheap. And, yeah, I, I, I think he finds a, a way to get it done. So either, either it be on the feet or on the ground, I think he's going to maybe get, like, a late finish. So I'm going to go ahead and say Moraga gets – or not Moraga. I'm going to go ahead and say that Askin uh, finishes Moraga. Probably like in the third round with a, uh, huh, yeah, with a knockout. So, asking third round knockout. Next fight, Luke Jimo versus Dominic Steele. Um, we don't know too much about Luke here because he's making his UFC debut. Also fighting in his hometown or, you know, home country and whatnot. Dominic Steele, we've seen this guy already a couple times. So, here's Luke's page, striking in jiu-jitsu. Uh, this guy is a black belt in Taekwondo, purple belt in BJJ, four first round finishes, five wins by knockout, four by submission, two guillotine, a rear naked choke, and a triangle choke. Yeah, this guy's pretty much a striker with with a submission game, kind of similar to to uh, to Askin here. So you know, a little bit of similarities there. Uh, a lot of people say that this guy doesn't have a, like a really good ground game or the wrestling to take down the fence, but you know, I, I wouldn't really know. I haven't seen too much of that. Uh, but to me, I, I think he's for sure going to be the better striker here in the fight. Uh, we got Dominic still here, ground and pound. Last fight was against McGee. Got out grappled against Roberts. You know, it was a fight of the night, but he lost the fight. Um, and so on. Uh, also, this guy seems to be a little bit chinny, Dominic Steele. You know, he's been finished a lot in the first round. I think he's lost four times in the first round by knockout. So, Luke here starts quick. Like I said, he, I think he's the better striker. He's way more accurate, uh, more technical, more power. I just think Dominic still has the explosion, like the explosiveness with, you know, really good wrestling that could win in the fight here, which is kind of like, it's kind of risky picking Luke here. But Luke, you know, has that power, has some submission ability also. So I, I think Luke could catch him early and, and get an early finish here, guys. So I'm going to take the underdog here, Luke Jamel. Or the Jedi uh, to win by, man, I don't know. I could see the first round, but then again, the second round also. You know what? I'm going to say second round knockout because Dominic still starts off strong also, but then tends to gas. So, yeah, uh, Luke, second round knockout. All right, now for the featured fight on the FS1 prelims. We got Damian Brow versus Vince uh, Pichel. Uh, Pichel hasn't fought in a while. That guy, had, you know, he's coming off a really long layoff. Brown's been pretty active. What we got here. We got here. Wrestling and striking. Two fight. Two wins. Uh, two fight win streak. He beat John Tuck. I think I remember picking John Tuck in that fight, and it was a split decision win. And I thought Tuck won the fight, but I mean, fuck it, you know. Uh, yeah. So, and then he also KO'd this guy named Cesar. Um, 
what else we got here he got out grappled by patrick and this is a kind of a red flag here if you want to pick this guy um you know if patrick was able to take him down that much times i think vince here could do the same guys this guy you know as you can see they got him labeled as physical strength cardio and punching power um hasn't fought since 2014 guys it, it, it's pretty much been over three years so yeah i mean a little bit over three years actually because it's may 24 was his last fight and it's now june obviously so you know like pretty much like three years and like a few weeks but yeah this guy hasn't fought in a while he is on a two fight win streak but i mean it doesn't really matter he you know he hasn't fought in a while but as you can see in his last two wins when he imposes his game plan he lands a good amount of strikes and he lands a shit ton of fucking takedowns look at that shit that's eight takedowns against anthony Anjokani, who's a striker and I don't know too much about Garrett Whiteley, but he was able to get eight takedown eight takedowns on him also. And his only loss in his career and in the UFC was to Rostam Kabilov, who's obviously a pretty good fighter. He got KO'd in that fight really quickly. Um, yeah, so this guy's also a finisher. Seven of nine victories by knockout. I mean, obviously this guy has punching power. And, you know, from what I've seen in his last, you know, his last fight pretty much, you know, he showcased his strength, his wrestling. Uh, he's durable he's tough he could strike also um i feel like the wrestling here is gonna be able to win the fight if like i said if brown's gonna get taken down so much times like against patrick he got pretty much grapple fucked the whole fight i mean he got taken down five times i could see pichel here doing a similar thing to him just out muscling him on the ground because i think pichel's the more physical fighter so i could see him just muscling him down to the ground just ground and pounding him possibly even getting like a late finish if, if this guy you know gets too softened up so yeah you know i like pachow here as the underdog pretty sure he's an under oh actually no well yeah he is the underdog. there we go yeah plus 105 so yeah he's a, he's a small underdog on DraftKings. he's he's well priced so yeah i mean i, I like pachow here just because the of the value and i actually do think he's gonna win the fight with his grappling as you can see you know also damian brown's taking on the fence 37 percent both these guys' takedown offense sucks, but look who actually tries to grapple. Look at that shit. 7.44 from Pichel. That's, that's a lot of fucking takedown average, man. I mean, his last two wins, eight takedowns in each fight. So, yeah. I like Pichel here. So, I think Pichel gets it done. It could just be a, a dominating decision, and I, I, it probably will be that. Brown seems like a tough guy. So, yeah, Pichel by decision. All right, guys. That's going to be it for the picks on the uh, FS1 prelims. Stay tuned for the FS1 main card where I'll be giving you guys my picks on, on those fights uh, coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also subscribe if you guys want to see more uh, UFC fight pick videos. Uh, I do these uh, pick videos on every single UFC card whenever, whenever there is one. So yeah, just subscribe and stay tuned. Alright, so that's going to be it guys. Uh, thanks for watching and catch you guys on the next one.